Hey everybody, this is Brian with Film Direct. I'm going to do a quick video here on how to do some color separations out of Photoshop and then how to print it through PrintFab. I've had some people ask uh, how to how to print um, some separation. They're having trouble printing separation through PrintFab through Photoshop. So I'm going to do a quick video here on how to how to get it going. So I'm just going to use one of our standard logos. I'm going to drop it in Photoshop. Um, I'm using an older version of Photoshop just because that's what I prefer, but the new version is more or less the same thing. So this is a new, this is a vector artwork, but I'm going to do it in Photoshop just for an example. But um, if you're pulling stuff out of like a Illustrator or whatnot, you can uh, I I typically leave the anti alias off, and then you're going to want to size it to whatever <laughs> whatever finish size you want to do because you don't want to start resampling things. So this one's going to print at 13 inches resolution. Um, you know, the higher the better. You could go up to like 500. Um, it's just the the image size starts getting really big at too high. But I'm gonna just keep it at 500 mode. Um, I like CMYK, but I'm gonna show you why. But uh, um, you can do RGB or whatever. But uh, for this particular design, I'm gonna do CMYK, and I'll show you why in a minute. So anti-alias turned off because otherwise it's gonna you're gonna get little half tone dots around around the edge of all the the stuff. So it's better if it's even though anti alias may make it like a little bit of sawtooth, it's gonna be, it's gonna be better. Actually, maybe I'll try to open both, and you can see the difference. Let's see here. So here's with anti alias turned off. You can see the little sawtooth, but it's pretty minor. It's it's you're probably not even gonna hardly see that when it actually gets the film. And then let me see when we do it. with it turned on. It's probably going to look better, but it's actually going to be harder to separate and it's going to look crappier on film. So here it doesn't have as distinctive sawtooth thing, if that's even a word, but um, this is going to be hard to separate. All this little stuff right here is going to have tone. You're going to get fuzzy dots around this whole thing. So yeah, it may look cleaner here on the screen, which would be great for web representation, but for putting on a t-shirt, this is going to cause you problems later, so I'm going to kill that. And I'm going to go back to the other one. So we'll turn that off, size it. It's important to size it. You don't want to you don't want to do the design, all the separation, and realize you just did it at 3 inches and it's got to be 13. Then you're going to have to redo it, most likely. So there's the design. A um, couple tricks. I mean, there's... There's a few ways to do separations in Photoshop, but the the main thing you want to concentrate on is there's layers and then there's channels. So anytime you open up a, an RGB or CMYK or whatever design, it's going to it's going to open up to the layers palette. Um, and then it's going to have the separations on the channels palette. They're they're really distinct. Each channel is grayscale and that's what you want. That's each each one of these channels is a grayscale representation of a certain color in that image. Um, this is this this is a this is a CMYK. This if you print this right now through the rip, everything's gonna have tone. So you need to get the colors that are in this design into these channels to really make it work right. Some people they separate it and they just do a different layer, like they'll put all the different colors in each layer. Well, each one of these layers is CMYK or RGB, and it's gonna be difficult for the printer to interpret that and not half tone things. So. I don't even bother doing the separations in layers. I always do it in channels. So let me show you how I would do this particular one. There's there's a couple of different ways to do it, but I'll show you like the most common way is the color selection tool. You I'll back up select. You got to select color range. You got fuzziness, sample colors. I wouldn't even mention. just keep it on sample colors. There's other things you can do, but for ease of Clear, like just clarity. Let's just do it with the sample colors. Um, any color you click on is what it's going to select, and this fuzziness is going to determine how much of that color it actually grabs. That's kind of an art form in itself. You're going to have to mess around with this to before you can kind of get familiar with how much of it's grabbing. You know, because you don't want to grab too little. If you if you start putting too much, then it's going to start grabbing any similar colors as well. If there's different colors in this design that are similar, it's going to start pulling different colors. So there's like a little art form to this. You're going to have to kind of mess around with this to get it um, to figure out how to use this. But 
this is probably the most um, popular way to separate colors in Photoshop. So like, let's say we want this black image right here. I'll keep the fuzziness right about there. Hit OK. It's going to put these little marching ants around everything that it's selecting. So then you go select, save selection. And now you have an alpha channel. Well, there's your black. So alpha channels are great, but you really want to do it a spot channel. So if you double click on the image, unless you've done this before, it's probably going to have this default, the mask area. So um, click on selected areas and then hit OK. And then next time you open it up, click on spot colors. It'll make more sense once you try it, but it's always going to default to this one, but you don't want that one. You want it to default to this one, and then you're going to, you're going to turn it from selected areas to spot colors. This is the one you want, spot colors. Um, color, you can change any color you want. I'll show you that here in a second. And then solidity. Um, you, it doesn't change the opacity of the design. It just changes how the colors interact on the screen. So I'm just going to leave it at 50% for right now. I'm going to leave this... Since it's black, I'm going to change the image to black. So there's our black. And um, you can kind of see we had a couple different blacks going on in this thing. You can kind of see right now that they're, they weren't the same black. When I, when I designed an Illustrator, I used two different blacks. So that's what's going on with that. So we kind of got to fix that. Uh, that's the first thing I noticed off looking at it. You can still see right here too, there's two blacks. If you printed this right now, I'll just show you how this works. Um, get, your, get your eyedropper tool right here, click on it, and then right here it says 87, and this one's 100. So right now if we printed this film, this area right here would be an 87% halftone. It, it, would, it would grayscale. It would turn into dots on the film. This would be solid black. So I get a lot of calls from people like, hey, why is this black, why is this solid in this halftime? Well, there's a reason. One's 87% and one's 100%. So the quick and easy way to get these both 100%, if that's what you want, is um, you go to your levels tool. It's just the command L on your keyboard. You've got three inputs here. You've got this one. Turning the turning the right hand one down will lighten it. Using the right or the left input up will darken it. And this is the midtones right here. So you'll have to play around with it. But typically when I see something like this, you'll start seeing little lines right here. Like this sees these two little dots. That's where you want to move it. Now it's going to be hundred percent. If you go back to your if you go back to your little thing right there, now you're at hundred percent. And then um, I would mess with this output level. That's all I would do right there. Hit OK. So now this is 100%. That's 100%. Everything's going to print the same color on the film. So now we've got our black ready to go. And we just got to do the other colors. Um, here's a little cheat you can do. I like doing CMYK for this reason is magenta is probably going to be really similar to what you need for the red. So. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this channel and I'm going to make my red out of this channel instead of trying to eyedrop that particular red. This border thing's kind of a bummer because I mean that was where our information was on the in the black. We had two different kinds of black right there so we got to figure out how to get rid of that. Probably I would go back in Illustrator and just correct it there because I'm going to spend more time trying to fix that in Photoshop than than anything. So. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and try to kill this line with the Levels tool. The same way we just darkened it, I'm going to try to kill it. And it's not going to work. It's taking too much information out of all this area right here, so that ain't going to work. So we'll use the Magic Wand tool. And we'll see if we can delete it that way. So that got rid of that. And then uh, I'm going to duplicate this. So here's our, here's our proof. Here's our steps. I want to see what color we're going to make this. So here we go. We got selected areas. We're going to have a spot color. 
click on the color. I'm going to eye drop probably the darkest area in the design. It's that reddish orange color. Keep the opacity at 50% for right now. Uh, let's move it up. I like to do reds around 70%. So there is that and there is that. So now we've got two colors here. We've got we've got our black and we've got our magenta. We still got a little funkiness right here because of the two blacks, but I'm not even gonna mess with that right now. That's something else. So you have to that's gonna require more time and maybe I'll do that in another tutorial on how to fix stuff like that. But really it'd be easier just to fix it in Illustrator than we separate it. So so now we've got our red. And then we've got our black. What you can do too is you can click on your red and go to your color libraries and you can actually pull a really similar Pantone. So this is this color is really similar to either warm red or 179. So that'll put a little Pantone in our little channels here so we can kind of remind ourselves what color that is. So now we've got to get the yellow. So let's get this yellow here. Um, let's see if we can work with this right here. This isn't bad. So I'm going to duplicate the yellow here. So there's our yellow. I'm still not digging this line around here. I'm going to try to kill that thing. And then I don't know if you want the yellow going all the way down to the bottom of the red. Let's see what happens. Well, I drop this one. That's why I keep two two of these open, so I can eye drop the proof, so I can get the colors similar. Oh, so solidity, I'm going to keep it at 50. Sometimes uh, yellow, I'm going to do 40. The lighter colors I do lower. The darker, more opaque colors I do higher. Like red, I usually do 70. Yellows, light blues, I keep 40. So right now, if you look at the it's the sequence is off. So right now, if we printed this with the yellow last, it would pretty much kill the whole yellow, the red that was there. So we're going to go put put that back in the sequence, put the black last. So there we go. It looks pretty close to what um, to what the original is. Some, you know, it, it it all comes down to what kind of what your preferences are. Some people, some printers I work with, they don't they would they don't mind keeping that much yellow underneath the red, you know, because it makes for a nice fade. You're never you're not going to get any black coming through right there. Um, some people don't, they want to knock out so that not that much red is sitting on that. So if that was the case, what you could do, I'm going to duplicate it so we can see the difference, but you could take the red. So what I did was I just selected the red and now I'm going to delete that out of the yellow. So there's, there's more of a traditional fade right there. You've got your yellow and then you've got your Let's see, you got your yellow, red, black. So the main difference was, is I just killed, I just killed most of the yellow out of here. So there's the original yellow and then I put red over top or this one you could put, you could have a little bit of yellow fading into red. Just depends what your printing preferences are. Personally, I like that one. So that would be that would be pretty much the design right there. And then if we wanted to do an underbase for this, uh, there's a couple ways we could do it. Um, we could highlight these colors and let's see here. Let's do something like this. Um, let's put it against a green backdrop. There we go. There's green. Okay, so now let's say we will, let's say we wanted to put an underbase under this black, which I wouldn't recommend doing, but we could do that. Um, let's go back to our color selection tool. Select color range. So now I've selected all this green area. So let's say we wanted to put an underbase on this black. We'll hit OK. And then uh, I'm not worried about these registration marks right now. They shouldn't even be there. But So you can ignore those things. But here is this is where the base needs to start. So what, we, what I would do is go to select 
modify right here and then you go you can either go expand or contract because we've selected the background we need to go to expand and we're going to expand it by two pixels and i'll show you what that's going to do so now there's where our color ends and that's where our base is going to be so that creates the choke for our base and then we go ahead and select save selection and we would need to invert it that didn't work. There you go. So there's our base. If we wanted to, if we wanted to do a solid base under that whole design, there's our base. So we're going to enable it base. We're going to call it. We're going to make it. I'm going to make it a little. We'll make it white. And then I'm going to do another channel up here. I'm going to call this shirt color. We're going to assume that we're putting on a like a light blue t-shirt for now. And then we're going to go to the paint bucket, drop it in on our shirt color. Now there's our blue shirt, there's our yellow, there's our red, there's our black. And then here's the other yellow we did. I'm going to ignore that. And then here's our base. So we need to move the base into the right position. But for right now, let me show you what happened. Like, so we just created that two-point choke. There's our two-point choke. There's where our white ends, and that's where our color ends. Color ends, it overlaps the white, so you're not going to have any white playing peekaboo. Again, I wouldn't underbase black, but for this, you know, shits and giggles here, I'm just going to show you how that's done. So we're going to put the base. We'll go shirt color base, yellow, red, black. That would be the sequence I printed this design in. So there, that's design. I'm not going to use this yellow. I'm going to kill it. And then from now, if we wanted to print this, if we wanted to send this to Illustrator, we could, to print it out of Illustrator, we could just go ahead and save this. Um, we can do it that way. If we, let's say, let's back up a second. If you, let's say you didn't want to create a, put a black underneath this, or a base underneath this black, what I'd recommend doing is let's duplicate this. And then we're going to take our black, which we don't want part of the base, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete it out of the base. So now, really, that's what you want right there. So I'm going to put that there, this base I'm going to put to the background. Any channel I'm not using, I just throw to the bottom. That way I can kind of know that, OK, that's kind of, it's probably going to go to the garbage can. So there's our shirt color. There's our base. Here's where the opacity comes in. So white ink is never going to be totally opaque. It's always going to be like medium opacity. So this is like a 50%. So that's probably what it's going to look like on the shirt. But usually I do like a 70% opacity. That'll give me a good idea of what the opacity on the shirt's going to look like. And then here's the base. Here's the yellow. Here's the red. Here's our black. So that's the design. That thing's ready to go. So there's a, now, you know, there's a few ways to output it. Right now we can, um, if we're going to output this out of Photoshop um, using the PrintFab software, you know, obviously you're not going to print the sheer color, but the base, that's going to print solid. The yellow is going to half tone and any year, pretty much this whole thing's going to half tone. Um, it's about 85% on the top and then 71 down there. So that whole thing's going to print half tones. This fade goes from 2% all the way up to 89%. I typically don't make the darkest areas 100% because when you start making these areas dark, these all, everything blows out. Everything gets so dark that See, there's the lines I was talking about. See those little lines? When I when I move this to there, it's going to make the, the darkest part 100%. But sometimes what happens when you make these areas 100%, you start gaining up everything. It's just going to look muddy. I typically like to keep the halftones on the lighter side than the darker side. So let me see what it looks like. So there's, I think that looks pretty good. But if you wanted the darkest areas to be 100%, you'd move the right or left hand slider to where these dots start that's going to move the darkest area in the design to 100 percent. see there's 100 percent right there this is a cool little tool the color you need this color palette open when you're doing these separations because that's really key to 
knowing what your gradients are going to do. So it's also key to knowing what if you want something 100%, if it's going to be 100%. So like let's say this one's at 100, but like for instance, it was, I don't even know if it's going to work. No, nah, it's like it's still 100. But if this came out at like 98% and we print into the film and everything's half tone, well, that's what it is. This isn't 100% black. Anything less than 100% black is going to automatically half tone. So this being 100%, now it's not going to half tone. But I get a lot of calls from people, hey, my films keep half toning. What's going on? Well, that's what it is. This is, this is not at 100%. So you got your base at 100, you got your yellow. You've got your red, and then you've got your black. So let's see if this is 100%. So that's that's 100% too. So that one's good to go. So this is pretty much your design right there. So now, if we want to print this out of PrintFab, let's pick a printer. Let's the Canon Pro One. Let's do this Pro 100. I got it set up right now. So page setup. We'll do. Uh, The A3 plus that's going to be like 13 by 19. So there's our design. Now, if I went to print this right now, it would print all of these channels. It would print each one of these would print on its own on its own plate on its own piece of film. So. We'll go ahead and hit print. There's our printer we're going to use. Now I'm going to check the profile. Right now I've got it. This is all set up properly. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. It's going to be the half tone screen mode. You want that's a multi black. That means you run all black cartridges. You could do single black or multi black. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you're using. If you're using an all black system, check multi black. Screening saturation. I know for this particular printer, it likes anywhere from 130 to 180, depending on the more detail of work I'm doing. I'll keep it between 130 and 150. I think the other videos I put it at the 200 of the default, but I've kind of found that it's it takes longer to dry. The dots get a little bit blown out. Sometimes it's almost too dark. So lately, I've been I've been keeping it more in the 150 range. Uh, screen LPI, I'm going to do like a 48, it's almost 50. Screen angle, um, they don't have 22 and a half by default in the print fab, so I've been either using 25 or 20. They're both really close to 22 and a half, especially 25. I don't think you'll have any trouble with it, but I'll show you how to, how to change that through the program if you want. Uh, elliptical dots, fine, and then we're going to go ahead and print. That's going to send the job to the printer. So that's how you would use that's how you would print out of um, print these these channels out of out of a uh, print fab. Obviously you don't want to print the shirt color. So let's just say you want to print one, you just want to print the base only. So there's the base, and then you're gonna the page set that's already that's already saved. So we're gonna go ahead and hit print. And then you got to pick the printer again. Let's see this one. Yeah, that was the default setting. So again, you could you could save each setting. Like that's what the presets are for. On the this is a Macintosh. You could save these presets. Uh, like this is the one I just did. So this is a 130 or it's a it's a 50 LPI at 25. So that's almost what I did on the last one. So. This thing's ready to go. I'm gonna hit print. This thing will send this send this design, just this one particular film to the printer. And then if we want to do the next color, you just do the same thing. Choose your printer. And then choose the whatever whatever profile you've got set up you want to print, then go ahead and print. Now it's gonna print that sheet to the printer. Um, that's how it works. But if you do like multiples, if you let's say you want to print all four of these channels straight to the printer, just I put the eyedropper, put the eye next to the eye icon next to the each one of these channels and just hit print. And now it's going to print each one of these channels. It's going to send each one of those colors to the printer. 
So that's where you do that. Now let's say you want something outside of the, the print fab default settings. Like you want to print like a 22 and a half degree angle. So what you would do is um, go to print and under cal you go to output. I'll, do, I'll go back here. So it's going to default right here to color management. And depending on the version of Photoshop, it may change, but all the stuff's in this, it's in different spots, but it's all the same. It's all going to be the same. So go to, it's going to probably default to color management, go to output, and then it's got all this stuff. You can put all these little things like calibration bars and all kinds of stuff on your film if you want to. Feel free to, you know, mess around with that. I'm not concerned about that stuff. Um, the screen. This is what you would do. So let me back up. The screen, use printer default system. Like this is basically going to, uh, you want to uncheck this. Now it's got all the different channels that we could possibly print. So like, let's say we want, uh, let's say just this one base to be, let's say a 50 LPI, lines per inch, LPI, lines per inch. Um, angle, let's say we want to do the 22 and a half. That's how we would do it. Let's see, round dot. And then um, use same shape for all inks. If you set this up, it's going to use the same thing for every single color. If you don't click this, then you could change each particular color. Like if you're doing a four color process job, you could change this to whatever. I usually do 22 and a half degrees for, for cyan and then magenta, I would do 30 degrees up. So it would be 52.5, there's 50. And then yellow is 15 degrees minus cyan. So it would be seven and a half. I'm kind of going fast, I'm not, and then the black is always, you want 30 degrees between each color except for yellow. Yellow, the difference between yellow and cyan is 15 degrees. Everything else is 30. So whatever you choose, I start with 22, 22 and a half on the cyan, and then I add, 50, add 30 to that for the magenta, so that's 52 and a half, and then black or yellow. Okay, so yellow, we're gonna go down 15 from cyan, so there's seven and a half. And then black, we do, we add 30 from our magenta. So our magenta is 52.5, our black is gonna be 82.5. There's our black. If we're printing CMYK, we're not even printing CMYK. This is, I kind of got off, off, off the subject there, but if you were gonna print a CMYK image, that's the way you would do it. You could do each color with a different um, different angle. I mean, obviously you want to keep the frequency the same, but each angle changes. The shapes all got to be the same. But that's not what we're doing. So we're going to go back to our spot colors. So base. So if we want to use, I would use the same for any kind of spot color stuff. I use the same shape and base and color and uh, same thing for everything. So I would use 50 and 22 and a half. So if you want to override the print fab, this is the way you do it. You go to output, you go to screen, Uncheck that and then change this to whatever you want. 50, 22.5, and round. Now we're going to hit OK. Now it's going to print that, but we need to make a change in print fab. So now when we go to print fab, we need to, under print fab features, this one, this is where you change it. So instead of being halftone screen mode multi black, you go pre halftone. Pre halftone means what you just did in Photoshop is going to override the print fab settings. So right now, with multi black turns on, it's going to use the print fab settings as default 50 and 25. These, whatever these are right here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to override this. But since we just changed those in Photoshop, We'll go to multi-black pre-halftoned. Now it's going gonna, it's gonna to ignore these, and it's going to go to the ones right here that we just did. So that's how you, that's how you override the print fab settings. I get a lot of questions on that. If people want to use custom settings, that's how you use custom settings. So that's it. Then you go print. 
And um, now it's going to, even though this says 1525, it's not. It's going to do whatever we just did on the screen right there. So that's how that works. So I went through that pretty fast. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave some comments in the, in the uh, comments below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Or hit us up with an email or, or uh, I guess, drop us a call if you have any serious questions about it. But, um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. And, um, again, like it if you liked it, and then uh, hit us up with any comments. All right, thank you.